Whiplash here. Welcome to another exciting tutorial from PH Studios. This tutorial is part of the XNA Basic Training Series and we will cover a more in-depth overview on sprites. Last tutorial we covered vectors, we covered how they looked on paper, what they are, and a brief coding overview on them. This tutorial will build upon the first sprites tutorial to allow vector twos to hold the position and we'll go into the origin of sprites in this tutorial. So since this tutorial builds on the last tutorial, I just open the last tutorial's code and we'll build upon that. Since we already created a texture 2D and everything, we do not have to worry about redoing that and wasting your time. So just open the last tutorial's code for the sprites and follow me through here. At the top of the class, the sprites game class, add a vector 2 that will hold the position. And since this is just a generic object, then it's not a content, it's not a sprite or a audio file or anything that we can manipulate in the coding. We can initialize that in the initialize method instead of the load content method. So if we go to the initialize, just say position is equal to new vector2 parentheses 0 comma 0. And this will identify the top left of the game window as the position of our sprite. And in the load content we already got the player sprite and in the draw we already added the begin draw and end calls but as you can see we have a new rectangle 0 comma 0 comma player sprite dot width comma player sprite dot height we can delete all that and just replace it with position now if we press F5 we will achieve the same effect we had with the earlier code it's just a lot easier to use when you have vectors. Now play around with this code. Change the zero, the first zero to 100 and run it that way. As you can see it's pushed more on the x-axis. If we change the y uh, component of the vector to let's say 250, it will be pushed down on the y-axis. Let's leave it as zero zero comma now. All right, now we are going to go into the origin of the sprite, and to do that, we need a very complicated draw call. Now, the good thing about this is about Visual Studio and other IDEs is that they have code completion. So if we could just draw and add the parentheses you can see we have one of seven if we press the up arrow and the down arrow we can see the overloaded calls that we can use I'm gonna choose six of seven since we can provide a vector to origin now you have to make sure you follow this exact format or you will get build errors so the first it wants a texture 2d like above so player sprite now it wants a position, so like above, position. Now it wants a source rectangle. And the good thing about cone completion is at the bottom you'll see a brief description and you can see it says use null to draw the entire texture. So null. Now color, like above, color.white. Now we won't we will not go into rotation until the next few tutorials. So I'm just going to say 0.0f for here. Now the vector2 origin, I'm going to say new vector2. And of course you can go above where you made the position vector2 and create an origin vector2 so you can manipulate it elsewhere in your code. But for now I'm just going to create a new vector2, 0 comma 0. Now, it dropped this down to 5 of 7, so we need to be careful to make sure 
that we followed the correct format. So press escape when you have the drop down menu. And now press down to get back to 6 of 7 and it wants a scale. I'm going to do 1.0 on here so it's 100% scale. Now we need the sprite effects dot none. And now float layer depth we want that as 0.0f. Now I'm just going to provide better formatting here. Alright, so now if we press F5, we will achieve the same result, but more detailed draw call. And actually delete the first draw call we had. So we achieved the same result, but let's see what happens when we change the center. Increase the X just a little bit. Let's say this 15. You see, it is pushed to the left. So you can see when we draw an object, it uses the center. If we use the first call we made in the first tutorial, it uses the top left as the center. Here we can modify whatever center we want. Let's say 25 for the Y. It'll be pushed to the left and up. So remember in the first tutorial, I said some times you will have the center in the center of your sprite so when you draw 0 comma 0 the full left side of the sprite and full bottom top half will be cut off so let me demonstrate that for you player sprite dot width divided by 2 this is the center of the X it is getting the width of the player sprite and dividing it by 2 to get the center of the X now we do the same for the height to get the center of the Y. So now if we press F5, the full left side of the sprite and the full top side of the sprite are cut off to only show you the bottom right quarter of the sprite. So sometimes you'll need to know before you go into coding where you want the center because if you change the letter on, you'll have to change all your positions to follow a certain format. So that's pretty much it for this tutorial. It was a short tutorial. Next tutorial will cover uh, movement. It'll be a two-part tutorial, so there will be two tutorials on it. And we'll cover the rotation, and we'll cover the actual movement. I'll show you the movement one complete. This is what we'll cover in the first part. And it's slow because I'm recording the screen. But we'll cover it'll move automatically and it'll bounce off the sides. And then the second part we'll worry about rotation and scaling for detailed animations. So I hope you stay tuned for the movement tutorials. Hope you enjoyed this. See you next time.